Hi, my name is Akisha Clark and I am from an island called Grenada located in the Lesser Antilles. I live in the northernmost Grenadine island which belongs to them known as PT Martinique and I am a, the president of an all-female NGO known as the PT Martinique Women in Action. Deforestation on my island is a big issue because when it rains now, uh, most of the sediments that would have been on the land, they end up going onto the reef, which actually kills the fish and the reef itself. It's also a problem based on uh, farming techniques because of the, uh, the exposure to the soil that we get with the sun and everything, like the, uh, the wind, um, the sea blast that we get. So if the forest was still intact, we'd at least have a, an agricultural economy. Our reefs would be healthier. And we just have a more pretty island. The forests are being destroyed because one, uh, we are boat builders and a generation or two ago, uh, there was no way of getting lumber to the island. So what people would do would cut the bigger trees down to build their boats. It has become a, like a culture or so the people call it, a culture of having their ruminants, uh, sheep and goat to be specific, let loose on the island. So when they plant back the trees, even though it's a good initiative, these animals, they strip them beer and the pro same problem still exists. Climate change is affecting my island in many different ways uh, when it comes to fruit production. One, in agriculture, uh, the temperatures are like really scorching hot. So we get longer dry seasons. So it's, we're unable to harvest pro, uh, crops sustainably. We uh, have to um, know when and how to plant or we would not get anything. And so that's one of the, the initiatives that my women group are trying to get going that we have an a aquaponic system to grow these plants in a controlled environment which requires less uh, resources, like water resources, because it's very scarce. Our main water source comes from the sky, the rainwater. So we do rainwater harvesting, and we save some of that to take care of our plants so that we can get food. Everything else is imported. Another way uh, climate change is affecting us is with the rising sea temperature te temperatures and the levels i'll mention the temperatures first um, with the fish now the warmer the water is the more the fish go out and this it makes it harder for the artisanal fishermen on my island because instead of going just there now they have to go farther out to fish and also the reefs are dying ocean, ocean acidification uh, the rising temp the rising levels of the sea also it's eroding the shoreline so people have to be very cautious now they have to build more inland we have to have more sea defenses and even the the boats um, when they go out it's a bit harder for them because now um, it's a little more more rough on the ocean uh, people don't talk about that but before uh, the, the climate change, there was a more calm sense when you were fishing. Now you, it would be more rough and turbulent. And you would ask yourself why not understanding that because of this climatic change, the seas are also responding in many different ways. The sargasso epidemic is so great in our island. So there are days when we will go to the shore and it would be packed, start, uh, like feet high and you would there's nothing we have no processes for it all we know is that we can save it and probably use it in our gardens but still it's so much we don't know what to do with the excess and then there will be days when you go back and it's all gone and we're still trying to cope and respond to that in an appropriate way in the fishing industry on my island, um, there is a, like a stigma, I would like to say, that when it comes to women actually going out on the vessels and fishing, 
it's sort of like taboo or considered bad luck in a way for women to be fishing. And this is really not based on any actual fact or experience per, per se. Um, I've proved that women catch more fish than men. It's kind of based on ignorance. The ignorance being put forward by the men on the island trying to control uh, how women, um, the things that they do, uh, control their behavior. Women on my island, if you are a part of it, most likely you wait until the guys come back with the fish and um, you either ice them maybe, although they're being cleaned and pre-iced. Uh, you give them like a second cleaning and then you help store or you create a value-added product from it, which most likely is salting the fish. And that's as far as it goes when it comes to women in the fishing industry. The Slow Fish Caribe project and slow, f slow fish on a whole, I am sort of new to the idea. It's part of a, a, a bigger something in the Caribbean that I am unknowingly a part of where uh, sustainable fisheries is coming to the, the knowledge of the local people, um, how to uh, adapt mitigation strategies. You get to learn from people on their techniques and, and um, the way that you should actually be carrying out these processes. So I would say it's impacted me and my community in a good way. So now I can go back and I can say, well, I have learned this best practice from Mexico. I've learned this practice from Panama. I've learned this from Honduras. And if we implement it, we can sustainably harvest fish for the next 10, 20, 30, 40 years. Or even if our fish population decreases, we can have another livelihood to substitute in the same fish fishing industry, but not the fish that we're catching, maybe something else like mussel or conch or even doing um, sea moss farming, which is actually still part of fisheries because it's done in the ocean. Food for change to me, um, based on my community, is actually producing food sustainably, being able to feed the people with food that is free of chemicals, grown um, bright in our island and consumed there. It's food for change also means um, having that connection or link with other people who share the ideas as we do and having that one banner that represents us all.